Okay. Um, can you guys hear me okay on this mic? I might, I might wander away over here as well. Can you still hear me if I'm not on the mic? Yes. Oh. Project. Um, Okie doke. So that was, um, that was a, a kind of welcome to, to the Glasgow School of Art and the School of Design. I'm going to talk very into the kind of nitty gritty of your actual application to GSA and what that entails. Before I get going, are there any student ambassadors in the room just now? Any guys that are helping Jackie out today? Do you these people, you can ask these people questions today as well as me if, if you're moving about the school. Um, and, and also uh, there's plenty of time to ask me questions at the end, but if there's anything I say that just doesn't make any sense at all, which is quite likely, um, just stick your hand up and we can have a chat about that as well. Um, so the way I like to start as a little icebreaker, because it kind of relaxes me a little bit as well, is to try and find out who has traveled the furthest to come and visit us today. So can we play a game and everybody stick their hands up? Everybody stick their hands up. Nobody too moody. Right, thank you. If you're from process of elimination, if you're from Glasgow, we can probably cut you guys out already. Sorry. And even greater Glasgow, East Renfrewshire folk like myself, you're not anymore. Right, that's still quite a lot of hands. Anyone from like outside Central Belt, not Glasgow, Stirling, Edinburgh, who's travelled further from north or south? Still loads of hands up. Right, okay. Um, who's from like way up north? We still get people way up north in Scotland, over way south, England. Right, can we take bids now? There's still like a few hands left. We, who's, who's from outside the UK? Nice, okay. Yeah, so where? France? Have we, can anyone beat France? Up at the back? Are you beating France? Where are you from? Spain. Anyone beating Spain? Anyone travel further from Spain? Yes. Spain as well. Where in Spain though? Like Madrid, Cadiz, where are we going? Salamanca. That's north, isn't it? Middle. Canary Islands. Oh, that's got nobody can possibly beat Canary Islands, surely. <laughs> Anyone further from Canary Islands? I don't know, it's like is Ullapool further away than Canary Islands? It's something no, it's probably not. Canary Islands, wow. Right. Round of applause for the this is travel all the way from Canary Islands. Thank you. It's also interesting, who's travelled the shortest distance? Is there anyone from like Garnet Hill here? Is there anyone from round the corner? No, okay. Um, okay, thank you for that. That mic is buzzing. Oh, it's quite annoying. I'm going to move this over here. It seems to pick me up. Okay. So today I'm going to talk about three main things. Applications what the interview experience is like, and studios. I know Barbara spoke a lot about studios there as well, but I, I want to talk about it too, because it's kind of the, it's the special thing about studying at Glasgow School of Art. Um, so your application process is kind of in four steps. The first bit is your UCAS application, the deadline for which is the 15th of January. However, if a lot of you guys are at school, you've probably got teachers telling you to apply before the end of October. Um, yeah, right, okay. Don't worry about that. We wouldn't expect to see your folio until far later, December, January. The, the January 22nd deadline is for the folio. So how it works is when you apply through UCAS, we get a notification and our registry departments email you a link where you upload your portfolio, okay? And that just comes straight to us. It's not like a UCAS thing, it comes straight to us. So you do a UCAS application, and then separately, you send us a portfolio and a 500 word statement. And I'll talk a little bit more about the content of the folio and the statement as we go. Then the specialist staff and the program that you're applying to assess the application. Um, after that, we would make a decision. Your application would either be unsuccessful or we would invite you to interview. And then following that, again, your application would either be unsuccessful or we would make a conditional or an unconditional offer. Unconditional offers are pretty rare. You would need to have all the required academic entry requirements. You would need to have your English language exam sat if you're applying from outside the UK. Um, so most people get a conditional offer, which is like, make sure you pass these exams at school, make sure you finish college, you need to sit this English language test, that kind of thing. So in a boom, 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 quite quick, 
Um, the interview, just to go back a step, so the deadline's obviously January. We assess most of the applications after that. Interviews are kind of February, March, sometimes into April time. And then your unconditional offer just depends on when your interview is, but probably depending on when you apply as well. We need to meet certain application, like UCAS deadlines, um, but it will be after your interview, obviously. So, as I said, your following statement, when you apply via UCAS, our registry department sends you a link. And on that link, you upload 15 folio images, which is your supporting visual materials. That's the kind of official terminology. That's your portfolio. And then a supporting statement, 500 word statement. That's different from your UCAS personal statement. So when you're applying to UCAS, if you're like me, when I applied to art school back in 2000, and, like a long time ago, the, I was also applying to social sciences and stuff at Strathclyde because I was interested in both. And so it's really hard to write a personal statement that fits into art school and also Strathclyde social sciences. It's really hard. We recognise that. So you can write your personal statement in UCAS, which is, goes to all the universities you apply to. But then you also get to write a 500 word statement that just comes to us. And that goes alongside your portfolio. So you can talk a lot more specifically about your projects, your interest in art and design, that kind of thing. The UCAS statement still matters. We still read that and assess that. But this supporting statement goes alongside your folio. What we're looking for in portfolios then is the range and application of practical skills. I've got some actual examples of portfolios to show you and what we mean by that. How you present your sources and influences, your development process, coursework, stuff you're doing in advanced higher art or college, whatever you're studying, and then independent, um, that's a typo, file types, independent work, that stuff you've done that your teacher didn't tell you to do. So Barbara spoke a little bit about in studios, you know, a bell doesn't ring and tell you to turn up at art school. You've got a lot of freedom, a lot of creative freedom, a lot of physical like space to work in, but with that comes a lot of responsibility. And so what we're looking for in applications or in applicants is actually we know that you're the kind of person that can study in that environment. Um, so can you work without a teacher looking over your shoulder? Can you take initiative on creative projects? Are you actually interested enough in art and design to put some time into it out with just coursework? And it doesn't need to be a lot because you're doing loads of exams and you're trying to finish college and there's plenty on, but just enough to let us know that you're into this. Um, currently, there's a, there is a limit in the file size that we might increase this year. So just check on the website when it comes to uploading your folio. It will be really clear what to send us in terms of file types and sizes and stuff. Um, but you can check that website or obviously just email us and ask. Practical skills. Right, practical skills is your, how you work with different media and materials. Your drawing, sketching, uh, painting, 2D, 3D work. It can be really analytical drawing, really expressive stuff. What I want you to take away from this is not the style of the work that I'm going to show you, but how it's presented and the quality of it. We, there is not one particular type or style of work we're interested in at GSA. We're really open. Everyone's work's independent. Um, so yeah, don't, don't look too much at the, like, the specifics of the style of stuff. Just look at how it's presented. So you'll see a lot of, um, as I said, drawing. A lot of people will include life drawing if they have any. Again, it's not essential. Some people do it alongside their college course or whatever, or maybe do an evening thing. Or, um, if you have it, include it. As I said, there's not any particular one style. Some people are really analytical with it. Some people are really far more expressive. It shows your ability to observe and draw, your observational drawing skills. It's also quite interesting that the architects, fashion students use a lot of life drawing, they can think in 3D. If you can absorb, absorb, observe the proportions of a body and reflect that in a drawing, that shows us how you can observe space and reflect on it through drawing. Um, we like to see experimentation. You'll notice, so this is obviously, you get 15 slides, right? But you don't have to have one image on one slide. You can have multiple images on one slide. Like this person here has obviously went through a period of observational drawing, some research, and then some exploration. There's multiple images on that slide. You're going to hear me repeat that a lot, but it's an important thing. I'm not going to talk too much about every slide, because sometimes they just speak for themselves. As I was saying, so sometimes it's really expressive stuff, sometimes it's really analytical drawing. 
You can demonstrate your interest in your chosen subject through what you're drawing also. So this is obviously someone who's maybe an architecture student or an interior design student. Again, exploration. That would be a far less valuable slide if there was just one of those four images on it. So it's really that range of media that you work with, materials, um, drawing, photography, um, analytical drawing, expressive painting, whatever it is that you're doing, shows your range of creative skills. That's quite a, a nice slide. It's actually, I've had this in this presentation for years, but it just, it shows, so there's a couple of things it shows us. I've just realized how dark it is. Sorry guys, the light is, probably makes it quite hard to see. Um, is that better? Sorry, I hadn't realized that. So this is an interesting slide because we can see the scale of the work. The artist is actually in the photograph in the bottom left. You can also see a bit of the process they're using up top, they're working in the studio, and a little bit of kind of secondary source research. We don't want to see too much of other people's work in your folio, but if you've got some annotations of what you were researching or a little bit of it, don't show us too much secondary research in this stuff. It's just not what we're interested in seeing. Um, a lot of our students maybe have particular social, cultural, political, environmental issues that they're maybe reflecting on through their projects. Um, and, you, and you could show as your interest. This is a, a, someone who was doing a bit of kind of field research, photography, sketches on kind of thug Ned culture. And again, if you're using computer-aided drawing or any interaction designers in here, if you've used Process or P5, you can take multiple screen grabs of the work of the animation, but also a wee screen grab of your, of your creative coding there as well, if that's something you do. Um, not everybody does, obviously. If you've got it, then shows it. And then some just, you know, maybe slightly more traditional still life drawing that you've maybe done in your coursework as well. The other thing as well, I guess, is the self-directed stuff I was talking about. So this is maybe someone who's got an interest in photography that they're demonstrating that's not associated to anything they've produced on, in college or school. Likewise, someone who's done a bunch of observational drawings when they're on holiday in Lisbon shows your self-directed work. It shows us you've got energy to go and do it. But similarly, we're interested in like interested people. So if you if you like if you're into travel, if you find travel a really important influence for you in your work, or maybe you really like a certain kind of music, or there's a, some eighties animation studio who produced films that you love, tell us about that in your folio as well. This isn't like a mechanical process where you need to just spit out a certain number of drawings and send us them and then we assess the quality of them. We're interested in what you're interested in. There's not Again, there's not one style of thing we're looking for. There's no special buzzwords you need to tell us in your application that we're like, this is the kind of person that could in, get into Glasgow School of Art. We're not like that at all. We're, we, this place, it's, it's an exceptional place, but it's not an exclusive place. So tell us about what you're interested in and what you're into um, through your work and also in your written statement. Development work. So this is, I'll try to take a drink of water. Two or th I would say between two to five slides at least. Oh God, you've all written that down. Everyone's folio is different, okay? But yeah, at least some slides on development work. And what I mean by development work is, show us your process. We don't want to see a folio that's 15 slides and just 15 random drawings. We'll go, yeah, you can draw, but what are you doing with it? So this is a nice slide where someone's done some photography, then produced some sketches in response to photography, and then developed that work further. They did a bit of this, I thought about it, I did this, I thought about it, I did this, the process. Again, if you're experimenting with materials, um, you might include some technical notes in this thing, your reflections on your decision making as you're working through your, your higher work or your coursework, whatever it is you're doing. Again, you can, lots of different photos showing that experimentation, exploration, imagination.
Okay, can I, you'll be able to reflect your interest in your chosen subject in some of these slides as well. So this is someone who is obviously applying to textile design and they're showing um, observations or decision makings on things like colour, texture, proportion um, and how those go together. Um, and again, it doesn't have to be like this beautiful, beautifully presented polished professional thing if you're no, if you're scribbling notes and making observations and making decisions as you go that's fine like it doesn't that that's kind of really technical kind of um considerations about how they were building this uh, the light fit And again, not too much in the way of secondary research in these slides either. Okay, you don't want to see too much of other people's work. Or if there's certain important references that you need to make, that's okay, but don't flood it full of magazine cutouts and album covers. Right, sketchbooks. So sketchbooks are another useful way to show your, both your practical skills, but also your development and process. Sketchbooks are, there's lots of different types of sketchbooks. There can be sketchbooks that are for uh, research, for gathering ideas about the start of a project. There can be some that are just for observational drawing, like that Lisbon slide, that person maybe kept a sketchbook and was just drawing the buildings that they like to look of. Some of them are maybe really technical, if you're learning a new printing process at college and you're trying to take notes on the stuff you're learning. And similarly, some are really personal, almost like journals. You know, Some artists or designers like to keep a sketchbook that's, that's something really personal. Um, but they show us a range of how, that mix of how you gather ideas and what you're interested in. This is someone who's obviously into churches or that kind of music. Um, someone who's into 80s fashion and haircuts and they're collecting gig tickets and, scrib and tear outs of magazines. They're scribbling on top of them. They're pulling together lots of the different things that influence their work. And that's a really nice way to present it. I, always, I, always, I had a friend who could produce just the most beautiful sketchbooks that could be published as finished things in themselves. And it broke my heart because I could never do it. I was always rubbish at sketchbooks. So sometimes if, I would keep some, but they maybe weren't always as presentable as that. So pick your best pages. You can pick three or four or five images and, and take them and present them like that. Similarly, if you're the kind of person that does that development or research gathering on big boards, that's fine too. Just take a picture of that and, and use that in a slide. Um, everyone's work is different. Some of you might do animation, video, sculpture, stuff that's maybe temporary or something that's too big to bring in a portfolio. Um, so here's some kind of tips on how you might want to photograph that stuff and present it. Again, you can take multiple screen grabs of any animation and include maybe a text link of it. I can't guarantee that the applicant, the assessors will use that link because it's not, we don't, accept kind of completed animations it's just slides at the moment that we're accepting that might change as you come to apply in january so just keep an eye on that oh we have really clear admissions guidelines on stuff but if you want you can always just write the link out in the bottom of the bottom of the screen um system drawing this person kind of built a machine to draw for them um it's quite a nice slide in that they've gathered the in action as well as the the products of it um this sculpture, this is a really good slide actually, so it's kind of, there's quite a lot happening, but it shows me the scale of the work, it shows me some of the preparatory drawings up in the top right, it shows me a bit of the process of actually making it, um, and then the top left photograph, they've got it in a white background, it's well lit, we can see the sculpture in action. Again, I won't talk about every single slide, but that's... Final and resolved work, so if when you're uploading your folio, you've reached the conclusions in some of your projects and maybe you've produced some garments or some jewelry or 
book covers, whatever it is you were, you were working on and designing. Um, here's some tips on how to, to photograph them well and present it. You can, this is maybe an excuse to have, if you've got one finished painting or bit of work that you're particularly proud of, you can have that in isolation on a slide of its own, give it a bit of prominence. Similarly, if you're, fashion's a classic one for this, but I see it in lots of different programs too. If you're applying to fashion design, we don't expect to see a folio that's just a com full, completed collection of fashion design, because that's what you're coming here to learn. So even if you haven't had access to those materials to make that, if, you've got, if you can show that you've resolved ideas and commit them to paper and present them well, that's good enough for us. That shows us this isn't a competition on who's got the most money to buy precious metals to make a jewellery co like collection. We're not interested in that. It's actually far more interesting to see somebody who can be resourceful with very little. But if you are making jewellery or completed works, then by all means demonstrate it on a mannequin. It shows us the scale of the work. Then this was obviously a, an LED um, experiment that was moving in time, like that sculpture 3D stuff. Take multiple photos of it, shows how it was working. If there was just one image, like if that one image was on its own on that slide, that wouldn't make any sense to me. But there's five images, five images? Five images, a bit of not too much text, just a nice note, nice annotation, explains what the project is. Um, I get what that work is. Again, I, sorry, I keep on using fashion as an example, but maybe it's just a kind of easy one to talk about. This is, it, it would have been easy for this student to put that garment on a desk and take a photo of it on their phone and send that, put that on a slide. What they've done instead is they've picked uh, an appropriate model. They've shown us, they've taken multiple photographs of it. They've made sure it's on a white background so there's nothing else to distract from the resolved work. It's well lit. They've taken multiple photographs that show us the complete garment, a bit of detail, and the back of it. There's nothing I don't know now about this object. This student not only cares about their work, but they can present it well. There's lots we can read in from three photographs of a, of a completed bit of work like that. So really take care to, to show us that you care about the work you're producing as well, because how you actually present it is important to how much we can see and observe about you, but it also tells us about your personality in terms of how you're willing to present your, present your work, how much you value your work. Again, similar thing, like a nice setting for, the, for that sculpture to be photographed in and a little bit of the original research and development work from it that shows us where the ideas of kind of came from and developed into. Again, like I said, this is a this bit of jewelry made out of paper straws. It's, it's not a competition to see who has access to the best facilities and best materials. We're interested in how people work with what they have. And if you've put anything into exhibitions, make, you can photograph them while they're in situ as well. Because again, if we just had a photo of the, that top left photograph, which is just a kind of digitally resolved image, it wouldn't have made much sense. It was quite nice to see it in, in the exhibition. Okay, I, I can answer any questions about the portfolio when, when we get to the end. The 500 word statement I keep on talking about, um, again, separate from the UCAS thing, this just comes straight to us and it's meant to be written alongside your folio. So talk about the projects you've worked on at school or college, your sources of inspiration, how your ideas developed through the project. So. We had this six week project in advanced higher art. I had to gather this research, I had to do these drawings, and I made these decisions. So, talk about what you think was successful in that project and what you would maybe do differently, what wasn't successful. Um, tell us your interest in design. So, talk about the historical or contemporary artist designers that you're interested in. Was there any exhibitions you've been to recently? And again, this doesn't, you don't need, I don't want folk to think you need to name drop, like, I went to see, I don't know, you went to <laughs> Tate Modern, right, great. But if you don't have access to London and you went to, like, a local 
local authority community art fair and you saw some work you were interested in, that's fine, okay? Again, this isn't a, the, as I said, we're exceptional, we're not exclusive. Talk about what you have access to, show a bit of adventure, show a bit of interest. And again, there's not, it's not like there's a particular name you can drop, to use fashion as an example again. We ask students, you know, what artists, designers are you interested in? And they always say, oh, J.W. Anderson or name drop some high-end fashion designer. That's great, that's great. But if you're interested in Zara homewares, if that's what you like, that's cool too. Just tell us why. There's no right or wrong answer to these questions. It's far more about what you, we want to know about you, not what you think we want to hear. Um, and yeah, we'll ask, we will ask, you know, why, what motivated you to apply this particular programme? Or sorry, we will ask. That's what we're interested in seeing in the statement. Why Glasgow School of Art? The trick to that, I suppose, is do your research on the programme. You can read on the website all about us. There's like 300 words almost for every programme. And then there's a whole programme specification document that tells you, not that one. There's like another programme guidelines thing that tells you plenty more about the programme. Do your research and reflect back on us what it is, you, what interests you about the programme. Does that make sense? So for textiles, for example, they'll talk about Scotland's rich heritage in craft, making cottage industry skills because we teach a lot of that making on the textiles program so if that's what interests you in the program then tell us that in the statement don't just say i want to come to glasgow school of art because it's got a good reputation that's fine but show a bit more interest in that um, what do you hope to gain out of the program that's a really difficult question if you're 17 years old and you're applying to six different universities um, again just be honest that's my only thing about that for product design and engineering, um, so you guys are applying directly to Glasgow School of Art, which doesn't require the folio, but what we're looking for in your statement is an understanding of what product design and engineering is and what a career entails. If you've got any competitions or prizes you've taken part in, tell us about those. Evidence of relevant work experience and work shadowing. If you've, done a, if you've managed to spend a summer at a company or a week when they do those work experience weeks, tell us, tell us where you went and what you learned and how you found it. Anything you've done outside of school as well that is relevant to product design engineering, your own wee projects, or what you're passionate about that's relevant to PDE. And also just your, any community work volunteering that you've done makes you sound like a committed young individual. Um, then that's great too, but that, it doesn't need to be, it can be any extracurricular activities, football team, music. Tell us about you. So the interview. Um, the interview, again, we don't interview for product design engineering for year one. So if you're applying to year one for product design engineering, you don't need to um, consider interview either. I found there's a lot of, we don't really talk enough about interviews and people ask me about interviews quite a lot. So I'll just explain how it kind of works. You'd probably be, if you're from Scotland or if you're close enough to travel, then you could be here in person to be interviewed by a couple of members of staff. If you're from further away, we can arrange it by Skype. Um, Totally up to you, it doesn't make a difference to us. It's, you don't get less kind of interview uh, by doing it on Skype. It's, it's, it's fair across the board. They usually last about 20 to 15 minutes. It's a two-way conversation, okay? We are wanting to learn about you. You don't get grilled. The people that are interviewing you are teachers. They're interested in your development. Um, what would normally happen is you'll get a time slot to book on the website, come along on that day. Um, you, someone will show you up to the studios, maybe up to the third floor or the fourth floor, and you'll be sitting outside an office space or like a meeting room. Um, a member of staff will usually come out and say, hi, how are you doing? My name's Andy. I'm going to be interviewing you for the textiles program today, and we'll, I'll take your folio off you, which the look of fear in some people's face when that happens. And we, we take it into the room, and we kind of have a rummage and look through your work, and, and then five minutes later, we'll come out and say, right, come on in, we'll have a conversation. And it is a conversation. It's not like CIA, like spotlights on you. Um, yeah, be prepared. Other interviewees might be about. If you're super early, there'll definitely be somebody else kind of waiting for uh, their interview too, which is kind of nice because you go, you're as nervous as me because I'm hating this, and they'll feel the same. We don't expect you to be a professional, okay? But we do expect you to be prepared. So here's my kind of tips on how to actually prepare for interview. Do your research, like being here today. Feel free to take photographs and stuff of slides, that's absolutely fine. 
do your research, they've been here today. You've shown an interest in the program uh, and you kind of know why you're applying. Um, please know where everything in your portfolio is. The first question we will ask you is pick a project that you like to talk about and tell us about it. So if you waste the first five minutes of your interview by going, oh, I did this thing at college 18 months ago and you're like, I can't find it, that, looks, that doesn't look great. Um, do you have questions for us? Please have questions for us. Um, it just shows you're interested. Again, just, you will, there'll be something that you don't know about the school or the programme. We're not that amazing at communicating about the Glasgow School of Arts, so there'll be something you need to know about. And I guarantee you it'll be the same question that everyone else that day asked. So there's no, there's no daft questions for, for us. It's our responsibility to tell you things. You don't you need to be expected to know all this stuff. Um, and have you practiced talking about your work? Um, as your career develops, you'll know this gets no less painful. But practice talking about your work. Get, have a couple of your pals and just do that thing. Pick a project and talk about it. Or take it round to your granny's house, put it in the coffee table, and she won't have a clue what you're talking about. <laughs> but it just get, gives you practice of actually like putting something that's so kind of in your own head and so visual into words is really difficult. So practice it. Um, and can you talk about other work you like? We will ask what artists, designers, or how do you research other artists and designers? Um, so have, be, be kind of prepared for that. And relax, because everyone wants you to do well. Again, no, we're not laying traps for people to catch you out and go, ha ha, you were never meant to go to art school. It's, we, we're educators, we're interested in people's development, and we want you to be able to kind of figure out if we're the right fit for you um, as well, okay? Mounting, just a little note, because some people maybe aren't in, currently in school or college and you're applying, so how to actually prepare your work for interviews. So you physically bring your portfolio. Say, for example, you've got some drawings or whatever photography that you're mounting onto A1 paper. Keep the space at the top and the left and the right kind of equal and then just leave the bottom as long as you need. It just lets us know what weighs up. Because, I mean, not being funny, but sometimes you've done a very expressive bit of work and I'll be in an interview and I'll go, so what way up is that? Which is kind of offensive to you, but also just a bit embarrassing for everyone. Um, so try and do it the top up, then we'll know it's this way up. Studios. So this is the textile studio on the third floor. Um, it's a big open plan space. Um, everyone has a desk to themselves. And I remember when I started art school straight from school, despite I was lucky how good an art department we had, but the studio was like, ah, this is totally, this isn't a classroom. Um, I need to sit here and there's 25 other people in the room with me. This is bizarre. And it's like open from eight in the morning till about eight at night. And you just go in and do, do the work that you were assigned. This is, you get a lot of freedom, but as I said, you get a lot of responsibility. So it's a common studio space, okay? As I said, you get one desk each and an open plan space. The technical workshops are in another bit of the building. So you do your drawing and your thinking and your research and then your reading and stuff in the studio. And you'll do a lot of the actual making and different workshops and then round the corner. Depends, every department's different. Like there's the 3D manufacturing uh, maker space down here. The textile studios are up on the third floor. It's all different. Project briefs are shared online and in the studio. Project brief, which again was totally new to me when I started at art school, is like a two or three page document that tells you the work you're expected to do over the next four weeks, six weeks, sometimes longer. And it will tell you some, something to research and it will tell you what kind of you're expected to output or produce in terms of drawings, um, or whatever it is. It changes per department, but just in general, that's kind of what they're like. And you'll have a weekly appointment with your tutor. They'll either be one-to-one -one or in groups. Um, or group tutorials with other students as well. So students interact with each other on your designs. This is the thing that's different about learning in a studio. You're not sitting in a lecture theater having somebody like me bore you for 45 minutes like just now. You actually, you're, you're producing work yourself and you're talking to other folk that, that are also doing, going through the same work that you're doing. And that kind of interaction is a great way to learn. It's a great way to make friends, but it's the best way to kind of develop your creative practice. Um, you'll have group tutorials, sometimes called crits, which I think is like an old-fashioned word now, so we don't usually call them that. 
but that's when everyone's kind of there to talk about the work they've done for the last couple of weeks. It gives you practice on talking about your work. It also gives you practice on receiving feedback on your work, um, which sometimes isn't fun, but again, it's that. It's always, it's safe. There's usually a tutor there kind of steering the conversation and you're encouraged to kind of talk to each other about what it is you're learning and what it is you're doing. So the idea of studios is to get your hands on your work, get your hands dirty. You, you will learn by doing here. You make things in, an art, in a studio. Um, you're not just learning by osmosis all the time by somebody just projecting ideas at you. Um, and then often the fun bit, final and resolved work is presented publicly. So a lot of the projects that you'll do, you maybe have a wee exhibition at the end of it. Sometimes there's big like cross school exhibitions as you go through. And sometimes it's just wee kind of um, presentations you'll do to a small group. But that's in a nutshell, or like five bullet points, how um, studios work. You all right? Okay. Is anyone looking to apply for architecture? Sorry. Do you want to come with me really quickly? Sorry. To no problem. Not at all. Sorry, folks. I'm going to. I'll one more minute and then we can do like questions, okay? So, just to. The, the act, what we're actually looking for officially, if you like, in the application criteria, which is what we state on the website, it's in all the admissions guidelines, and kind of what I've spoken about in, as we went through the slides today is well, we want to, we're looking for your ability to apply practical skills. Um, your ability to apply analytical and conceptual skills. So the practical skills was those slides that tell us you can draw the different materials you work with, your photography, your sculpture you're making, your sketchbooks, the whole shoot and match, okay? Your analytical and conceptual skills can come through through some of those developments, again, through your sketchbooks, but those development boards that show us how you take one idea from A to B. Um, how you communicate about your work and put it into context and your ability to demonstrate an interest in the specialist area applied for, those two, bottom two are kind of more generally in that 500 word statement. We, always, we can tell if you're interested in the specialist area by the kind of work you're producing, the spatial drawings you would see in an um, interior design application, the creative coding you would maybe see in an interaction design application, that kind of thing. But as a general kind of, to maybe help you put it into compartments if you like. The top two are kind of from the folio and the bottom two are more or less from the, from the statement. Um, one last wee thing before I take questions, I guess. This is a wee bit cheesy, but I've worked with artists and designers long enough to know there's at least one person in here who's feeling like they're maybe not meant to be here or they're maybe not smart enough or creative enough to go to art school. Um, so do me a favour and if that wee voice is in your head, just tell it to shut up for today. Um, because we want to welcome you here. You're absolutely, as I said, this is an exceptional place, but it's not an exclusive place. And you're here to figure out if we're, if we're right for you. If you're feeling shy, a wee bit apprehensive about the studio stuff that we're doing later on today from 11 to 1, don't worry about it because everyone's feeling the same way. And it'll be, you'll be amazed how quickly you kind of settle in and, and feel comfortable in it, um, or at least I hope so. So if you've got... Um, if you've got any questions for me, just, I guess, oh, sorry, I always finish by saying thank you for listening. Um, and yeah, happy to take any questions. We've got time before you skedaddle. <laughs>